So 11.4 deals with a topic that is maybe the most important that we'll talk about in geometry next year, and that's the Pythagorean theorem. So you might have some familiarity with the Pythagorean theorem already, um, but if not, here you go. The Pythagorean theorem helps us find a missing side of a right triangle. So if you know two sides of a right triangle, then you can always find the third side using the Pythagorean theorem. So just to recall that a right triangle is any triangle that has one right angle. So it has a right angle, it's a right triangle. Then you use the Pythagorean theorem as follows. Pythagorean theorem says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now the hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side and is always across from the right angle. And c is always going to be your hypotenuse. So you can think a and B are legs of the triangle, so you can think leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Don't get too wrapped up in what's A and what's B because those are interchangeable. Just know that C is always the hypotenuse. So here's just an example. Uh, we have a leg of length 6, a leg of length 8, and we don't know the hypotenuse. So we're just going to use the Pythagorean theorem. We say 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to c squared. So now we just evaluate the 6 squared is 36, 8 squared is 64, that's equal to c squared. 36 plus 64 is 100. And then from what we saw before, when we want to solve this for c, we would take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 100 is just 10. So C in this case is 10. Okay, let's do a couple more of these. We're going to find the missing side uh, for each of the triangles. Here we have one side of length 5, one side of length 6, but we have to remember that this 6 is actually our hypotenuse. 5 is a leg, and then we don't know this leg. We can call this A or B. Uh, maybe just call it A. You can actually call it whatever you want, but if we want to think A, B, C, uh, that works. So A squared plus 5 squared has to be equal to 6 squared. So A squared plus 25 is equal to 36. Let's subtract 25. A squared is equal to 11. Now you probably see an issue right now. If you were to take the square root of both sides, we get that a is equal to the square root of 11. And the square root of 11 is a perfect answer in this case. Um, but if you wanted the decimal value, you can definitely do that. Uh, when we do that, take the square root of 11, we should get somewhere about 3.32. So an estimation would be 3.32. In general, I'm okay with you leaving it as the square root of 11 unless I say to round. Here we go, another example. You can try this one on your own. So if you want to pause the video, go right ahead. Okay, so our hypotenuse you probably see right away is 13. So we're going to have 12 squared plus something squared equals 13. 12 squared plus, we can call that a again, that's fine. If we want to just call this a. 12 squared plus a squared equals 13 squared. 12 squared is 144. Plus a squared equals 13 squared is 169. Subtracting 144, a squared is actually just equal to 25. And we'll look at that, take the square root of both sides. a has to be 5. So now we get into this idea of a Pythagorean triple. And all a Pythagorean triple is, is when you have um, all three sides that are whole numbers. So obviously this top left triangle satisfied the Pythagorean theorem, all right triangles do, but it's not a Pythagorean triple because 3.32 or the square root of 11 is not a whole number. Whereas in this example here, uh, we had side lengths of 5, 12, and 13. All of those are whole numbers. So this triangle would be considered a Pythagorean triple. 
So that's just some terminology. There's nothing um, super big there. There's a couple very, very useful Pythagorean triples. The most common one is probably three, four, five. So a leg of three, a leg of four, and a hypotenuse of five. Um, but 5, 12, 13 is another one. There's actually quite a bit of these. I um, mean, they can just be helpful for you to recognize um, a missing side length quickly. Um, but you can always just use the Pythagorean theorem. So now let's go the other way. Uh, instead of being given a triangle, we're being asked, do the sides 2, 8, and 4 form a right triangle? Well, if they form a right triangle, they would have to satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. So what this means is if this were a right triangle, then 2 would be a leg, 4 would be a leg, and 8 would be the hypotenuse. So we're asking is 2 squared plus 4 squared equal to 8 squared? That's the question we want to know. Well, let's find out. 2 squared is 4. 4 squared is 16. 8 squared is 64. Is 20 equal to 64? No. So the answer here is no, these aren't would not form a right triangle. How about 9, 12, 15? Let's try this one. Our hypotenuse would be 15. So 9 squared plus 12 squared. We're asking, does that equal 15 squared? 9 squared is 81. 12 squared is 144. Does that equal 15 squared, which is 225? The answer here, interestingly enough, is yeah, 225. Oh, let's do that. 225 is equal to 225. So yes, and what that means is 9, 12, 15 is actually a Pythagorean triple. So you can go the other way as well. So that will wrap us up for 11.4. The Pythagorean theorem gets hit on very, very hard in geometry, but it also assumes you know it going into geometry. Um, so it's, it's important for us to go over it now in Algebra 1.